And this is my Amiga 4000, world's most expensive 4000. And what I'm doing today isn't actually Amiga, it's Windows. What? On this conglomerate thing is a PC case. Now I've taken off the top, one of the top cover dudes. I'm gonna put that down here because I'm gonna lose it. That allows me to pull this panel off. Now, inside of here is a Raspberry Pi 5 with a boatload of wires and controllers for all of the LCD fans from Lee and Lee. And there's six LCD fans and three regular fans. There's controller boards and stuff and things. This runs Windows 11 ARM. And it works meh, okay when it wants to. Controllers, controllers, SFX power supply with the Amiga 4000 adapter, got mode and color, and it's you've seen it before. You saw it probably not too long ago. I went on the old interwebs and figured out which Ethernet adapters, whether Wi-Fi or Ethernet, are compatible with this turd. Now, up in this panel right here that you may be able to see is a secret... HDMI and a hard drive tray that contains a hub. I'll just pull it out because it's just sitting in there. A hub. Now this hub is just a USB hub that I use to connect the keyboard and mouse when I need to get into the Windows side. This is the micro HD to HDMI adapter and it's just a Raspberry Pi 5 8 gig and you know you only get like four USBs so it, it, it kind of clogs up quick. So, Windows 11 ARM doesn't support the Raspberry Pi 5's Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Go figure. We have sort of a problem here. Microsoft said, eh, we're not doing that because we don't officially support the Raspberry 5. I got this from a project on the internet that you can uh, run Windows 11 on a Raspberry Pi 5. So. Anyway, there's two adapters that are supposedly compatible. The TC, the TP-Link AC600, $17, probably 10 on Amazon. And the TP-Link uh, UE330, which is a Ethernet and USB 3 hub. So I can knock out two with one stone. So we're going to first try this massive thing. And... I'm hoping I can squish it in here. I had it hot glued, as you can see, with all glory. I'll have to re-hot glue it. Maybe the cable's long enough. I don't know. I'll probably have to stick it this way so I can get around here and do that. Three ports and an Ethernet. It's got some plastic around it. I would optimally, optimally like to use the Wi-Fi. I'll plug the Wi-Fi into there if it works. You're going to hear a vacuum because we got a dog and the carpet's dirty. This was my cheap USB 1 point whatever hub that I had in here just for keyboard and mouse. It's meant to run the fans for the Amiga 4000. Or the Pi. I don't know. Enter to boot the Pi. You'll see the Windows swirly if it's going to work. There's the Windows swirly. Well, I can tell you right now, we got blinky blinky on the Pi. The Amiga, of course, because I moved it, touched it, whatever, is not working. We have no, nothing, open devices and printers. Alright, you'll see my Strymer and about nine fans. Uh, controller, controller, USB mouse, so the hub part's working. Uh, the oh, USB 10100 LAN, it is working, and the Amiga decided to boot after forever. Hey, maybe it was checking the hard drive. Don't know. Alright, so we have USB 10 100 LAN. Great. Network and internet. We have no, uh, nothing. Adapter settings. There are no adapters, so that doesn't work for shit. TP-Link, let's see. USB adapter, which is not for ARM, I can guarantee you that. That's an icon. Let's see what this says. Little virtual CD pops up. No information file. Because it's not for ARM, 
check driver install failed. Now let's further waste our money and uh, $17 for this AC600 nano size. It said arm on there, but you know, maybe I can get drivers for that TP link. Let's plug this little turd in and see if we can get wireless. 802 setup, incomplete, connect to the internet. That's the effing problem I had with all of my Wi-Fi devices. I tried several other little turds, so I just wasted $40 at the old Micro Center. Uh, great. Maybe I can uh, get a driver off of here for wireless products only. Luckily, my PC has still a DVD drive. Archer T2 Nano. Mac or setup. Plugins. Drivers. All right, maybe I can stick this on a thumb drive. Two more for four gig. Raspberry Pi, five, four gig. Windows 11 Pro, 24H2. I can't register it. I can't activate it. It's activated in test mode. Oh, look, we got a bunch of drivers. XP, 10, 8, and 7. That's great. Brand new device. Driver is installed. Now you can connect your computer to a Wi-Fi network. Well, honk my horn. Do I have to run some third-party bullshit program? Probably. Setup incomplete. Connect to internet. Shit. There's no Wi-Fi. There's no nothing. Another useless video, but it might help somebody in the future. That's why I do it. Okay, so I'm going to unplug this nano bullshit. We're going to plug in my lightning cable for my iPhone. And we're just going to go like this. Personal hotspot. Okay. Connect using USB. Plug into your computer and choose your phone from the list. And there you go. My phone is the internet. On shit cellular. At a speed reserve for molasses. But, let's do advanced options. Other Microsoft products, optional updates, zero. Do I have to activate the check for updates? Let's see. Update certification has expired. Oh, my date and time are incorrect. Oh, there is some updates it has to download. A bunch of Windows crap and a driver for my phone. So, in device manager, with Windows Update connected to my phone, it is there. It is, and it says it's working properly. There it is. It got a driver update. Holy bar mitzvah Batman. So, that might help you. That's, that's that. USB 3.0 TP-Link. Part number is, you ain't gonna see it, but it is the UE330. And it was 21 bucks at Micro Center. You can get them on Amazon cheaper. Ethernet is working. So much so, I'm going to unplug my phone. Bye bye, phone. Bye bye, phone. And I'm still connected to the internet. We are one gigabit. Now, that's that. That's great that that works, and that's groovy. I'm glad. And I got Windows updates. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this little. AC600 into that thing and see if it gets the driver for it. 802.11 AC wireless LAN adapter. Now I'm in the, oh, your driver is missing, okay. Let's double click it. Update driver, update driver. Search drivers. Windows, search Windows update. Come on baby, you can do it. You can find something. I gotta wait till that crap's done. Let's let the windows crap down. I'll check back. All right. So I'm a hoarder and I have old adapters, right? I have this Asus one. I have a Netgear and I have a TP-Link. Go figure. I'm going to try this little tiny thing because this worked on my Hackintosh. We're going to double click on this and say update driver. Oops. Search for drivers. Update windows driver. It's all .NET framework and cumulative preview update for 24H2. 70% memory utilization. That's why you want the 8 or the 16 gig for your 
thing. I don't. My 8 gig is somewhere else. This doesn't work. The easy N. Let's uninstall this device. Let's pull that little thing out. Let's try the Netgear. This does nothing. When you say search Windows update, it don't do anything. So the three adapters I have that work perfectly on Windows will not work on Windows ARM. But this thing does. So that is at least you're not dead in the water. Raspberry Pi is rebooting. I went on my PC, did a TP-Link AC 600 ARM driver. And it says on the AI thing that Visit TP-Link support site for Archer T2U Plus. And you have Raspberry or Raspbian links. Archer T2 Nano is mine. Mac, Linux, Windows, or Windows. There is no ARM driver. Or I chose the wrong device. There it is. Archer T2U Nano. Windows 10, Windows 11. 64, 64... 8, 7, XP, Windows 8, Mac OS, Mac OS, Mac OS, Mac OS. So this is not, but I'm going to get a Windows 11 driver. Windows 11, 10 and 11, 32, 64. 2021 date. So this is not a new card. Unable to find. Browse my computer for the other folder. Include subs. Next. Unable to find. So that is a big no. Neither one of these will do nothing except put the software on your machine that does nothing. But the plus note is the this one does. The E330US there. That does work. That's what we're rocking off of now. Behind the scenes of Amiga 4000 case weird crap. Anywho, I got it sorted. Raspberry Pi 5, Windows ARM, got the drivers for the thing if you're interested in Windows 11 ARM, Ethernet, because the Raspberry Pi one doesn't work. Micro Center, 21 US monies. You can get it cheaper online, I'm sure, but I have to have it right now. TP-Link, USB 3.0, 3.0 hub, and gigabit adapter. It is part number UE33 Zero. I don't know if that's going to focus. Maybe. Eh, I don't know. But anyway, that's the one that works. All the wireless ones do not work. I had to tether my phone to get the driver. Once I tethered my phone, it had internet, and then it got the driver for this thing. Anyway, where is it? On this plate right here is my hidden PC access. The Raspberry Pi 5 lives right here. Heat shrink taped, or what, not heat shrink taped, double-sided tape. This stuff's thick as Mona's mud flaps. And, uh, yeah, so that sticks this down. It's on a plastic, whatever it's called, hat base of a RPI-5 case. I just only use the bottom. Um, RPI-5 stock heat sink, blah, 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 cables, USB hubs, everything. But if you take this off, this is that PC case where it's rear mounted. And there is a HDMI on a pullout, right? And also the USB hub powered with Ethernet and this also can slide out a little bit not like an, a lot but that far enough to plug stuff in you know you're only gonna be using it to access the arm side of the Raspberry Pi for Windows if you ever needed to do some adjustment now I would love to have had the wireless adapter because I could VNC into this SSH and initiate a shutdown command for Windows side if I needed to shut the Amiga down because with this Z3660, she's a very picky girl. And if I'm having to reboot, reboot, power off, power on, I'm just killing this SD card on the Pi. It's like my third one. I've had to reflash it, reflash it, replace it. Finally, I put a 256 gig SanDisk card in there, Samsung card in there. Samsung, not SanDisk. And uh, it's been great. So if I needed to do the Pi thing, I could just simply plug this in, HDMI. Well, simply meaning find the right, the right way, and then ARM Windows will appear here, and keyboard, mouse, there you go. Now, the idea would be to shut it down properly. It doesn't take but 
couple seconds to shut down. Oh, I also hide the remote control for the top fan LEDs there, and it sums up pretty nice. But when it's all back together, all of this is hidden behind panels. They just click lock in and snap in. This goes on here, and I drop the screw every single time. Oh, it didn't drop that time. Okay. And that just snaps on there. And what does it look like? Complete. It's like this. I had the lights off. The Amiga's running. Anyway, you can really see the glory of what I've tried to accomplish. Now, I know RGB isn't for everyone. And it's not even for me. But I figured if you're going to go all out, go all out. These are mirrors under here. Mirrored infinity fans, by the way. They're not the LCDs. Because I'm never looking up. This Strymer is pulsed to act like it's feeding current. It's a little bit off. I split the braids in between to kind of toggle them just a little bit. You can do it all in the software. And I have the speaker turned on, well, the internal clicky speaker, like a PC BIOS speaker. Whoops. And that sounds for accessing the hard drive and letting me know it's booting. It sounds like this when utilized. So if I run something significant, like a demo, we'll do, so that is, uh, what is that, revision 2023, right there, you see the red, you'll see blue, and that's 060 CPU. Sorry, there's a glare, it's just the LEDs don't focus very well, and we're going to say, do not promote the screen, and, and I could flip the window, and we could watch the movie when it starts Sojourn of the Soul and you could watch that whoa and it's a really good demo and it looks cool in this case which is a very fragile girl with that Z-Turn 060 very fragile with its configurations so it's a very fragile girl with that Z-Turn and uh, if it's if it's your bag it's your bag I like it when it works like anything it's very problematic when it doesn't work but I know now not to check for updates if it's working that's what it's gonna be for me because it's too much of a pain in the butt to go through and uh, get sorted the only thing I would like is single source video on the HDMI Amiga video and that through that it would be great but maybe one day so that is it for round two of this behind the scenes what makes it tick how does it work and why did i do it i did it to pay homage to the purple 4000 because purple is my favorite color and so many people have helped me along the way and i wanted to do the best i possibly could to honor them and thanks for always helping a brother out contributing parts and things and boards and action figures and why not make it a tribute to the best computer in the world thanks for watching and i hope you learned something Remember these words, make Amiga great again. Please help Dr. Chris continue his fight for as little as a dollar a month. Or more. Thank you and Godspeed. Uh. What do you know from funny, you bastard?